Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about retro digital cameras. Or if I was young and cool, I'd be calling them digicams, of course. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know that I've been using digicams for the past few years. I enjoy collecting and using these little cameras. So despite being an old git, I was clearly onto something because in the last 12 to 18 months, digicams have become a thing. So what's really handy with these little digicams is they're extremely pocketable. Stick them in your pocket, take them with you every day. And another bonus of a digicam is that unlike the latest iPhone or really fancy photography gear, nobody's going to try and relieve you of it even in a dodgy area, a bit like this one. And the best thing about digicams is they can be picked up for absolute peanuts. Anywhere from three to 20 pounds should secure you the best digicam available. Right, now that we're somewhere warm, let's get a brew on. We'll take this back up to the office. Right, got a brew, time to relax. We can talk a little bit about digicams and where to find them eBay is the obvious answer, but I've noticed that quite a lot of cameras in this sort of genre have started to increase in price quite a lot. So early digital cameras, particularly some of the Fujis and Canons, are the ones that get mentioned a lot in vlogs, and uh, prices seem to be on the rise. I tend to favour going to look in things like charity shops. Now, if you're from the US, think thrift stores. And the other place to look for digicams is, of course, car boot sales. If you're American, think yard sales, that type of thing, estate sales. So there is a lot of debate whether you should buy a camera with a CCD sensor over a camera with a CMOS sensor. The CCD sensors do offer that kind of nostalgic look to them. Certainly, I know a few people say it looks a bit like film. I mean, I'm not 100% on that myself, but they do have a nicer kind of tone, some of the colours, things like that are quite nice with a CCD sensor. CMOS became more popular later on because video became a bigger requirement in these little cameras. That's not to say if you get given a camera with a CMOS sensor or find one really cheap that you should turn it down. You can always alter your images slightly in post. You'll get very similar results. I personally invest more time in finding a camera that works and also one that uses an SD card or compact flash system rather than finding you've bought a camera with a real obscure thing like smart media or perhaps an XD card, something like that where you can have to go and find a card reader so that you can actually download your images. That ends up being a real pain speak from experience I bought an Olympus which had smart media cards finding a card reader that didn't cost more than I had paid for the camera was a bit of a challenge and eventually I managed to get a hold of one but that delayed me getting the images off the camera for a couple of weeks so therefore if it can be as painless as possible so that you can enjoy using the camera straight away I would definitely go for an SD or a compact flash card so that's enough waffle from me now I've got to go and put my money where my mouth is and go out and buy a little digicam for next to nothing and we'll get out and take some images with it. So I said I went out to find a digicam to prove that they were still out there and yes I managed to turn up this. It's a Panasonic FZ9 little point and shoot. It came in the original box with all of the CDs and paperwork, everything there. The camera even came with a four gigabyte SD card as well. It also came with the original receipt from Comet, where it was purchased. And a Mr. J. Howie purchased this camera and he paid a full 99 pounds with an additional 12.99 for the SD card. So what can I tell you about this mighty fine seven pound purchase? Well, it does have a CCD sensor, which is desirable in digicams. One easy way to tell if a camera is going to have a CCD sensor is if it's absolutely appalling at doing video maxing out at 720p, likelihood is it's going to have a CCD sensor. CMOS sensors were generally introduced when people wanted to be able to shoot 
HD video. So what else has it got? It does have onboard image stabilization, which is pretty impressive. It does have a zoom lens. I think it's a 28 to 140, which is good. It does have a digital zoom after that, but let's face it, digital zooms are rubbish. Nobody wants to use those. Pretty lightweight, fits in the palm of your hand. Typical Digicam stuff. It doesn't have a mode dial, that's one thing against it. So it's only gonna be shooting jpegs and you're not going to be able to control the aperture or anything like that unless you have a bit fiddle about in the menu and see what you can do there it's got plenty of scene modes as well i don't expect they'll be up to much but generally it's a point and shoot and that's how i'm going to use it and one more thing about this little camera all the cameras tend to have some really weird little features and this one is certainly one of them if you take the battery out of this camera to charge it up it defaults back to 640 by 480 images and that caught me out as you'll see later on with some of the photographs I took bit disappointing that I can't remember what size images you've set it to I was basically shooting away thinking I was shooting 12 megapixel JPEGs why they thought this was a good idea in 2010 when this camera came out I do not know right then onto the images I headed out over a lunch break, took the camera with me, tried to shoot some kind of abstract shots with this little digi camera. I thought that would probably fit well with the type of camera it was. I did some photography without flash and there were some later on which I did sort of portraits with flash to try and get that kind of digi cam vibe, that, that look that's very popular using the force flash to give that kind of nostalgic look. Roll the photos now and uh, see what you think.